two things that struck you while visiting Prague this time? For example, in comparison with the visit you made in 1972. I was here in 1976, and at that point, it was all about people coming up and saying, you don't know how lucky you are to be in a free country because people will spy on you and know that you can think what you want. And today, this is more or less a free country. People can walk around and express things. And so last evening on the Charles Bridge, you could see this has emerged as a magical place again. And it was hidden for, for a number of years. Now it's magic that the whole world can see. Uh, yes, and you said that you are going to be disappointed if you, if uh, we as a, as the audience don't uh, teach you something during this um, during this public talk. Did we disappoint you? No. Let me see what I learned today. Um, I learned more about um, social inclusion when we were talking about how. People don't have friends here with mental illnesses because the friends will shun them and reject them if they have a mental illness. That that puts an extra burden on the system to be friends to people with mental illnesses because their friends disappeared or, or, or rejected them. I didn't think of it that concretely or put together quite that way until um, it was uh, said that way here. I've realized that it is worth focusing on building a community system and, and building community inclusion in your society first before trying to break down the mental hospitals. It's, it, mental hospitals are an easy target, but mm -hmm. we should do work here in the community first so we're ready for the people who are leaving so they are well taken care of here instead of demanding they close when we're not ready. So yeah. We should do more work here. Uh, it was really shocking to hear that so many people uh, became homeless uh, during the reform in America, which you talked about. So many people became homeless in America, but the mental health reform was only one reason. Another reason was most of our public housing that was paid for by the government was cut the money for that. Mm -hmm. So when the government stopped giving that social support, then the people had nowhere to live and ended up homeless. Part of helping mentally ill people is to have housing support and money for that so they can have a place to live. The other thing that happened in America was we had our war on drugs. So we took everybody who was using drugs and we put them in jail and then, we, then they can't get a job because they've been in jail and they make them even more violent. And so the war on drugs created a lot of extra homelessness. So mental illness was one part of the problem, but so was housing problems and so was substance abuse problems. And we have difficulties with much more poverty in America because we spread our wealth. We have many wealthy people and many very poor people. In the Czech Republic, you share better, so that will make you have less of this problem, I think. I am a peer worker myself, uh -huh. and I would like to ask you, how do you see the role of peer workers in general, or maybe in the upcoming psychiatric reform in Czech Republic? Can you comment on that? So I think peer workers are crucial. I think hiring peer workers is probably the most important transformational thing you can do. Mm -hmm. And there's a few reasons for that. One is when a regular staff like me works alongside a peer mm -hmm. staff, it starts changing me. It changes what I think a person with mental illness can do. In my view, it makes me have less stigma. To see, oh, look at the successes around makes me hopeful. Mm -hmm. The second thing is for the patients, we already know it's inspirational if you have an injury to have someone in a wheelchair teaching you how to do things. We know it's inspirational if you are trying to get off drugs to say, here is someone who's been clean for 20 years. That same kind of inspiration, here is someone who was in this hospital for two years. Here is someone who has dealt with depression, dealt with psychosis, who is now living and working and doing things and has a family can be very inspirational. And the other part is, Many people have trouble making relationships or being friends with people with mental illnesses because they're more frightened or other things happen. And we need relationships in order to heal. It is very hard to heal with just meds sitting in isolation. It is good to heal with someone else walking alongside you. And many people who have mental illnesses make very good walking companions make very good people because they've been there, they're more tolerant, they're more acceptance, they're better guides alongside. And so you can be relationship extenders. 
that you can have relationships and make it so a few professionals can help more people because you're the relationship extenders for the whole system. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I think, there's probably more than this many, but the last mm -hmm. thing is peers can be political advocates. I once went to, in California to our state legislature. To, we were asking for more money for mental health. We're always asking for more money. Mm -hmm. We're asking for money for mental health. And I went along with four people who had serious mental illnesses, including schizophrenia, mm -hmm. and we were asking together. They had been there many times before, and they gave their nice speeches about how things are supposed to go. And it came, I'm the last one in line. And I'm trying to think what to say since they had said what to say already. So I told the politician, I said, when you think of people with schizophrenia, with mental illnesses, when you're writing these laws, when you're thinking about funding, is this the kind of people you think of? Or you think of people on the streets are crazy or in a hospital? And she looked for a minute and says, I didn't imagine people with serious mental illnesses could look like this and be functional. That is a strong role for advocacy that says, we're not asking for programs or money to stop people from being violent. We're asking for programs and money to help people be able to be contributing members of society, to offer things to us, to be our neighbors, to be our friends, to be our coworkers. Yeah, well, I think that the people with mental illness have a lot to offer, so thank you for that comment. In Road to Recovery, you write about uh, giving jobs to people with mental health problems in your village. Mm -hmm. And I think we experienced like a little bit similar thing uh, in our project Studio 27, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which are people, everybody uh, here, everybody in our group has problems with mental health and uh, we are journalists and we film uh, debates. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about this? Is it similar to the jobs you give to people in, uh, in village? Um, th we, it, it, the idea is similar and actually we have a program for 18 to 25 year olds that runs a little radio station that does jobs about like you guys are doing. I think the important thing for the community to know about jobs like this is this isn't a charity job. This isn't for your therapy. This job is because you are doing something important. You are helping society. You are contributing. If you don't do your job, you don't get to keep your job. That is making you into a journalist first who happens to have a mental illness instead of a patient who out of charity we gave a job to work as a journalist. So you are talking about the recovery? And I would like to ask you if um, there, there are going, going to be new things that will come uh, together with the recovery, and if which things th what do that I might think is be coming next, <laughs> something like that. So, I th at least in America, I don't know what. Mm -hmm. So the the cutting edge in America is a few things. One is, can we include physical health in recovery? Can we include that you take care of your physical health so you live longer? And also, can we make medical doctors more receptive and welcoming for people with mental illnesses? Another thing in America is a number of people with mental illnesses end up in jails. Can we help use recovery to help you out of jail and stop a life of crime or going around? Can we specifically work it for, for uh, crime? Uh, another uh, place for recovery is recovery in the way the whole system works. Not just for the client and the staff, but how about the way your contract works? How about the way, instead of it being about politics or about economics, can the contracts be the way the administration runs? Can it also be about human growth, about relationships, about recovering so that the whole society and the whole can recover um, together? Mm -hmm. And I guess the other cutting edge, which is the same one we've been working on for quite a long time is can our society be more and more inclusive, more and more welcoming, more and more compassionate so that when we go tonight to a grocery store, mm -hmm. if you saw a man in the grocery store working and he has a wheelchair, mm -hmm. you would think, no big deal. He's working very nice, no problem. You walk into the grocery store and you see a man with developmental disabilities. Mm -hmm. He has Down syndrome and he's working. You think, no big deal, that's nice, he's working as a job. You walk in that grocery store and you see a man who's talking to himself and hearing voices. And you think, is this safe here? I wonder if this is okay. You know, where did my children go? I'm not so sure, I'm, I become very frightened. Yeah. 
when we can get to the point where you walk in that grocery store and you see someone working with mental illness and you go, no big deal. This is working, of course, people with mental illness work alongside us just like everyone else. Mm -hmm. Then we will be at the point where almost everyone with mental illness can recover. When we get over our fear of the violence, our fear of mental illnesses, then there will be a space for us all to live together. Hopefully it will go in this direction. In the book, Roads to Recovery, there is so much hope and it seemed that if there were so many hopeful stories, but uh, you didn't expand on the problems that may appear may have appeared during uh, developing the idea of the village. What were, for example, the three main problems that you encountered? So when we first began, to we America was separating people with drug abuse and people with mental health. So we had mental health professionals who were not very good at helping with drug abuse. And then we were trying to help people do both. One of our problems was we didn't know how to get along with people with drug addiction or how to help that. And we had a lot of stigma against people with drug addiction. So one of our first very big challenges is how can we be more accepting and welcoming people with substance abuse in order to work with them. We spent a long time trying to be able to learn how to do that. A second problem is that we had to be able to address the serious poverty people have who have mental illnesses. Can we have to help them have enough money to live on, enough money for an apartment because it's very expensive in Los Angeles? And that we had to spend lots and lots of time as poverty workers to help get the social services in, and so they can have a life um, to get together like this. One, actually one problem we have, but I don't think it would be a problem here, is that we have a rather aggressive legal system. Hmm. And so some, some of our people ended up in jail for long periods and things, and we'd have to try to get them out, and they would be even more damaged when they were there. Putting them, it was supposed to be a punishment, and it would punishment, it would break them down and make them even worse. And we'd spend a lot of time rebuilding people after going to, um, to jail over and over again. It took us a long time to build a, co a cooperation with the police department. And now we have a cooperation that has three levels to it. One level is the police themselves learn about mental illnesses so they can respond to people with mental illnesses without shooting them or beating them up and not so frustrated. The second level is we have teams where one policeman and one social worker go together in a car and when there is some kind of emergency, they decide, does this go to jail or does this go to a hospital? They work together to, one keep safe, one helps with the mental things, and that helps people get to the right place better. And the third level is something called the quality of life police. That there's people who are troublesome to the businesses, but they're not really criminals. And so for these people, instead of putting them in and out of jail, in and out of jail, and everyone gets frustrated, to the policemen actually help them rebuild their lives with us. The policemen help take them to the social services to get money. The policemen help them go to the sober living or the treatment program. They come check how are you doing. They call us and we work together. They say, there's a person here we're confused by. Will you come meet with them and tell us what you think about this person? So at the beginning, we had very bad relationships with law enforcement, and they would take people away and lock them up. Now we have much better cooperation with the policemen, so we're working together for the community instead of one getting frustrated at each other. So we are also changing the policemen. Maybe they're oh, becoming oh, nicer. Oh, substantial. It's not just nicer. They are becoming more educated and more tolerant and more understanding so that they, it's not that they let our people off. They know when to hold people responsible. It isn't, if someone has a mental illness and they commit a crime, they should be the same as anyone else. And so it's a way of dealing with them to make them part of the world to know what the social things are. It's not, oh, you have a mental illness, you can do whatever you want. It's, you have a mental illness, so let's work together to help you be a responsible citizen so you can be part of the, so in the same way we are building community mental health, the police need to build and are building community policing instead of locking everyone up just like we should stop locking everyone up. And then we can be partners, law enforcement and mental health, instead of uh, arguing with each other to work together to help people be in our community safely and as good citizens. Because psychiatrists are not so good at keeping everyone safe. That's not really a psychiatrist's job. That's more for a policeman to do. 
But if we work together, we can keep you healthy and safe and as a good citizen. So you're complementary. Yes. You are talking a lot about hope during the public during the talk. So I would like to ask you: Do you think there is a possibility that something like village will be in Czech Republic in the future? I definitely think so. I think it's not that you will make our program because our program only makes sense in our community, mm -hmm. but you can use the same principles to build a Czech version. You already have pieces of it here. You already have people who are invested in these people, people who are passionate, people who are skilled and talented. You already have people like yourselves who are trying to help others get together. That's the core to build a successful recovery community and support for your community here. Mm -hmm. It won't look like the village. No, everyone look, should look different, but the same principles, the same hope. And I guess let me finish on hope mm -hmm. is that To, for hope to be practical, you need to have three things. One is you need to have a picture of what you think is possible. You may not get there, but it needs to be a picture you can really believe in. And you need to know the second thing is why your heart cares about that so much. Mm -hmm. Why you want to have these community services so people with mental illness aren't locked away, they can live. You don't have to visit people so sad in the hospital for five years or more for their whole lifetime. They can actually have a life out here. That makes your passion alive. Because you need passion because there will be obstacles, there will be problems. And how do you keep going on bad days and when there's a bad government change or there's a bad money change or something or other? How do you keep going when someone violent happens? How do you keep it going? And the third thing you need is just a commitment to take the first couple steps in that direction. First couple steps toward building things. And you people here have built something every year for the last about 20 years. You're taking steps already. And hopefully we will continue, right? I'm sure you will. <laughs> yeah.